Welcome everybody. Thank you for coming. This is Starting Out Bright. I'm Noreen Savage. And in case we've never met, I want to let you know, first of all, I am nobody official with Bright Line Eating, but we'll be talking about the program Bright Line Eating. And these Zooms are meant for inspiration and encouragement. So that's why we're here. And you're going to love our guest because Terry Walker's in the house. But before we get started, I'd just like to tell you a little bit. Like I said, I am nobody um, nobody with Bright Line Eating, and how I got acquainted with the program is through a simple post on Facebook. My friend Lori posted that she had lost 57 pounds with a program called Bright Line Eating. If anybody was interested, they could give her a shout. So I got over to my messenger as quickly as possible to find out the scoop. And Lori told me about a book called Bright Line Eating by Dr. Susan Pierce Thompson. And the book is mentioned for bright lines that you don't cross. No sugar, no flour, three meals a day, weight and measured portions. When I heard all that, I was sunk. I thought there's absolutely no way that I could do any of that. But, you know, I trust my friend. Later, we got to, together for lunch. And she proceeded to tell me to do two things. One, get the book and get into the community. And I did both of those. I first jumped into a private group called We Eat Bright with Lines. There are many groups now. Starting Out Bright is a group that I began in connection with these Zoom chats, but many, many groups. And when I got in that one, I just sat and watched transformation after transformation, people losing weight, like a lot of weight, not just 10 or 15 or 20 pounds like I was doing over the months and years, the decades of diet after diet after diet, but they were losing like 50 pounds, 100, 150 pounds, even more. And for the first time in a long time, I felt so much hope that maybe this time was going to be different. I promised myself that if I lasted one year, I would do what my friend did. I would post on Facebook and I would help anybody that I could. Well, I got started in July 20, 2019. It took me a couple months to get motivated enough to do it. I got started and I'm a Christian. And that year came up July 2020. I was sitting right in that chair back there, remembering my promise to post on Facebook, thinking, what could I say? And I felt God say to me, Noreen, you can do more than that. You could connect people. Look at where you were, how I was inspired. I was at 270 pounds, five foot two, in excruciating pain in my knee, swollen feet sleep apnea, 
many times really wondering if I would wake up in the morning and all of the things that go along with it. So I was in a tough spot and to be so inspired by these people, if I could just get some to come and talk to those who were like me, wouldn't that be great? Well, who would come? Well, it's people like Terry. And I've had a chance to talk with Terry this past week, and she's the real deal. Her heart is full of gold and ready to give some of that gold to you. And you're going to love her. So let's get right to it. Hi, Terry. How Hi, are you? Oh, I'm so happy to be here. I'm excited to speak with you tonight. This I'm, is going to be fun. I'm interested to hear what we come up with. Right. <laughs> Well, you know what? That's the thing. We just had this chat by Zoom uh, this past week. And, you know, I like to do that just to get to know each other. And, yeah. and in that process, always these topics come up. So we're going to talk about some of the things and then probably some new things. Yeah, yeah. But one topic that came up that you were no stranger to when I mentioned about no sugar, no flour, three meals a day, weighed and measured, Wow, you jumped on talking about the no sugar piece. That was something that you went like a deep dive in for, right. I believe you said, 15 years prior to Bright Line Eating. So I wanted to bring you up to speed to that part that I, I really wanted to get that in, that you were not a stranger to that. Can you take yeah. it from there? Yeah, so um, I how you got to BLE then. Yeah, so um, it was it was around the year 20, uh, around the year 2000, um, when I first started my uh, ad addiction recovery with sugar, um, I knew that sugar was a problem. I had had a weight problem my entire adult life. I could not figure it out. And I knew that I, I knew that I was addicted to sugar. Um, and um, I got an email from God. <laughs> yeah, we had it. Um, the sender said Amazon, but um, but we know it, where it came from. And they said that based on your purchasing history, you may be interested in this book that's being released. So I bought a book. I bought five books um, on uh, eliminating sugar. Um, and because I was I was going to take the Christmas break from work and I was going to study up on getting rid of sugar and and conquering this once and for all. Um, and I spent, um, winter break kind of dabbling with this book and that book. And I finally was like, well, this book that just came out that, you know, that I got that email about, I better read this one before I have to go back to work. So I started reading it and, um, I, it was like, I was reading my story, you know, the paper, the, you know, I was all over the pages of that book, including when she said, um, did your, was your daughter shocked when she found your NMF stash in your underwear drawer? And I said, Hey, go look at my underwear drawer. And she went and opened it up. And yep, there was a stash there. It was like all the favorites were right there. So you were um, cleaning out the place. Well, I was, I was, cause I was eating it while, oh. um, yeah, while I was, <laughs> while I was reading the book. Cause you know, I, I had a deadline. <laughs> Right. Um, and uh, so I went off sugar, cold turkey on the 2nd of January, because I don't start anything on the 1st of January. And um, by the 5th of January, I was so sick, I had to call off work. I was, wow. I was so, I, I felt like I had the flu. It was horrid. And I was like, I'm never going through that again. So I, I vowed I was never going to eat sugar again. Well, you know how that works out, you know. <laughs> You can keep that as long as takes you can. One, takes one little more. Yeah. So, yeah. so I, I participated in a recovery program for 15, for 15 years. And I was part of the leadership group there. And um, when I hit menopause, um, my body betrayed me. And it started gaining weight. And I couldn't fix it. I, did, I, I, I was really discouraged. I didn't know what to do. And and. Um, so I, I, for a few years, I kept, I just kept at it. Um, and then I would, I don't know, I just hit a wall and I was like, you know, this isn't working. I'm going to just go do, do my research now. So I joined the, the local gym 
they had a lose to win challenge. It was like the biggest loser type of a format thing. Um, we had teams and um, I joined a team and I was doing boot camp at 5 a.m., exercising five days, five days a week for an hour. I mean, it was intense. And my food, I, I went to my chiropractor and paid him thousands of dollars for supplements and, and all these fabulous treatments, sitting in a sauna and, you know, yeah. and I lost uh, the first time in my life, I lost um, about 40 pounds and I was, I was happy. I mean, I was down 160, I'm five foot three-ish. Um, and I was, I, I was thin and healthy. I was the I, healthiest I'd ever been. And I looked good and my team won and I got $300 to go spend on clothes. Um, and so um, then my trainer moved. And so my a friend that was in the challenge, we tried together to keep it going, but I just couldn't, I couldn't keep it going. I could not maintain my weight. It was about, it was a constant struggle. It was a battle. And then I had a life event happen that like really threw me. Like I would, I went into a depression. Um, I gave up all food, food rules. I was like, you know, this is ridiculous. I'm, I'm tired of the struggle. And so I ate what I wanted, when I wanted, where I wanted, with whomever I wanted. It, I was like so far in the ditch that um, you could have covered me up and with dirt and you wouldn't, you wouldn't see me ever again. It was painful. It was um, physically and emotionally. It was a really, really hard time. Um, and I got back to that desperate place. Um, I weighed, gained all my weight back. Uh, I, I, was, I was a cliche. I hated that. But... It's what happened. And I gained all my weight back. And I, um, and then I started doing, I started patterns that I had had long ago. And I started looking for the solution. I knew it was out there. And I didn't want to go back to what didn't work, even though mm -hmm. I'm, and I, oh, and I also had decided I'm not an addict, but my body reacts addictively to food. Okay. <laughs> and so um, I, I'm keto. in that space right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, and like I said, I we're talking, this is well after, this is like 20 years into my first, you know, foray. You go 15 years, you get into menopause. Now you're not able to, you're not able to manage it. You right. get into the weight loss challenge. You lose the weight. You're feeling great. But then you have a life event and like, Okay, forget it. Yeah. So I still in menopause and dealing with that too. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. And I and I had sleep apnea. Well, and um, and I actually still sleep with my CPAP machine, even in my bright body, and I'm okay with that. You know, I have a family history. I've got a really thin brother who has sleep apnea, and I have a really heavy brother who has sleep apnea. So I think it's just part of our mm. genes, whatever. And I'm okay with that. Um, so. I was in that space where I'm like, I need an answer. This, I'm, this isn't working for me. And um, somebody had mentioned Bright Line Eating in a Facebook group for my day planner that I, that I use. And I was like, oh, I've never heard of that. So I went and I looked. And this was um, the beginning of 2020. Um, and I, um, I had decided that, um, so I'd spent most of my adult life feeling like I had a medical exemption from fasting for my religion. So it wasn't something I had done. But at that point, I decided, oh, I, I, think, that I think that exemption has expired. It's time for me to learn how to fast. So I, I fasted for one meal in January. And then I found Bright Line Eating. And I, did the 14, I decided I'd sign up for the 14-day challenge. And I did all the stuff uh, to get started. But I was, I was like, I'm not doing that. It's too extreme. I'm, I've been there, done that. I don't want to be that crazy person who, you know, is hard to live with because everything has to center around their world, whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it from the outside. Yeah. So I, um, so I decided to fast about it. So I fasted and prayed about it. I had a very, very clear answer that this was a gift from God. And why would he give me something else if I wasn't willing to receive what he gave me? And that was, that was 
it was gentle and kind, but it was definitely a wake up. And so I pushed the button, I'm ready to start. And that was 02022020. So February that. 2nd, 2020. Isn't that fun? I love that. I'm a numbers person. So, <laughs> um, so you're then, budget, Terry. Yes, I am budgetary. <laughs> I'm a budget analyst by, by profession and I'm, I'm budgetary. <laughs> So, um, so I pushed the button and I've been bright ever since. I, I have no reason to. Um, well, that's three years of four bright lines. Yes. Well, yeah, now past three years actually. Yeah, no. And so, and I did, it took me a year. I lost a hundred pounds in a year. I've gained a little bit back. Um, I, I think I went a little too low, but, um, but you know, it's funny because I don't really I'm, my weight is really not an issue anymore. I still identify as someone who has a weight problem, but oh, like but my weight, but body my weight, dysmorphia a little bit. Oh yeah, yeah. I still I look in the mirror and I'm still shocked that I'm thin. <laughs> so let let's say that again. In three plus years, you have stayed bright. Now the term in bright line eating is crystal vaser. Yes. Meaning this program is so, is in a, in, it's solid. Yeah. It has not gone off. So we ought to talk about what has been most helpful to you and maybe some of the struggles along the way that you've had to overcome. Because I don't think anybody gets through even three and a half years, even not bright sometimes, unless they have figured out what actually works so right. let's start from the beginning did you end up going into boot camp um i didn't go into boot camp immediately um partly because i've already spent so much money on yeah. trying to lose weight i just it was like i know how to do this i have 15 years of recovery experience and um but i will tell you that that model of paying for every class you take was that that was a problem for me. I I didn't I was I was born to be uh, a part of Bright Line Eating when oh my gosh I just got an answer I was born to be a part of Bright Line Eating when all access became a thing. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> um, you know I, I mentioned to you the other day that why did it take so long for me to hear about Bright Line Eating? I don't understand it, but I do believe that God has a plan for all of us. And uh, I timing was, is everything. Yeah, I wasn't ready for it when uh, before I was ready for it, and I was ready for it. I don't know if you're hearing this storm on my end or not, yeah. but there's thunder and it's like yeah. crazy over here. So just putting it out there in case we flash off or something. Yeah, every once in a while we'll see the lightning. Yeah, but it's yeah. it's really interesting over here, but. But anyway, so you got you got very f into the book, right? I did, um, and I had a friend. <laughs> okay, I have a friend. I called her and I said, "Okay, this this is how she tells the story." Um, I've been doing a new program for about two weeks, and I had I lost like I don't know. I, I think I lost like thirteen pounds the first two weeks. It was a ridiculous number. It was totally ridiculous, and. I you lost said, 13? Yeah, like wow. a bunch. I was I started out at 224 um, when I started Bright Line Eating, and I lost a, a bunch of weight immediately. You and, know what? This is starting to get more believable. <laughs> this, you remember on this with Deb? Yeah. And it said, lose 30 pounds in 14 days. I'm starting to believe that there's somebody that does. Well, if you, I think the more weight you have to lose, the more, the, the, the big, that big chunk at first is common, is, is pretty common. It's not for, not everybody, but, no. but, but yeah. if a woman can lose 13 pounds, imagine a man. I mean, oh, yeah. that's just the way it is. Men yeah. always seem to lose more. Yeah. But so anyway, yeah. just throwing that out there. Yeah. Yeah. So I called my friend and I said, I've, I've been doing this program and I've lost weight. And I realized that when I, lose all my weight. If I haven't told you about this, 
you're going to be mad at me. She says, I said, when I lose all my weight and you're still fat. (laughs) Say that. It was implied. Yes, but I didn't say that. Wow. No, you got to tell your friends. You just have to. Yeah. So she became my buddy and um, she did, she did, she is not currently doing bright line eating. um, And that's okay. Cause we all have our own journey and we all have to find our own way. And so we're still best friends and I still talk to her regularly. I still send her my food every so often. I'm like, haven't committed my food to you for a while. So here it is, you know? (laughs) Well, let's talk about the food too. How do you do your food? I mean, you, you must have that just locked down. Well, I, I really consider myself lucky because I love my food. Like I love my food. There's, I eat the same thing for breakfast five days a week, sometimes seven days a week. Um, And that's what's in the slideshow is that, that uh, little concoction of um, yogurt and cottage cheese and seeds and nuts. When I was doing weight loss, I did yogurt and cottage cheese. I didn't, but then when I added, I added seeds and nuts. Um, oh. So uh, when I, when I, yeah. And um, so I have that for breakfast with fruit and um, right now I'm doing sweet potato and oats. Uh, for okay, my. Okay. Let's talk about that. This is all in this breakfast bowl. Uh-huh. There's a lot of stuff in here. Yeah. And, so, and I got so. this idea from a Gideon game team member um, from Australia. It she seems called- kind of like an odd combination just on the outside looking in. You've got sweet potatoes, cottage cheese, um, yogurt, yogurt, seeds and nuts, but that's mm-hmm. because you're in maintenance. Right. And then what am I missing? Just the fruit? Well, fruit and and I, um, I I do some sweet potato and some oats. That's what I'm doing right now. Just okay. roll those. And you mix this all up. It's, I mix it all up in a big bowl. And it, yeah, it has to be a big bowl. So yeah, that's, <laughs> that's my breakfast. And I look forward to it. Even on my days off, I'm like, you know, I think I'll just eat regular food, my regular breakfast, my regular breakfast. Um, but if I'm, if I have like, leisure time and I'm like oh let's splurge I'll cook some I'll make myself an omelet with three eggs and an ounce of cheese and then I'll have some that's a lot yeah yeah it is it's a maintenance breakfast um and then I'll have some easy appeal toast and hash browns and some fruit I added vegetables to my breakfast for um maintenance as well I love the I took the maintenance course that that um Susan's taught and she basically said, you know, we get to create our own food plan on maintenance. And of course, which, you don't go. Which crazy. kind of sounds scary to a lot. It of does, people. doesn't it? Yeah. But she, she, I have a guide that I work with and I was, she's, we had a conversation after we watched that part of the, the class and it was like, um, I sat down with myself and said, okay, what would you like to add to your, if you could eat anything you wanted at any meal, what would you want to eat? And it was, it was interesting. I was like, I want vegetables for breakfast. Wow. (laughs) Interesting. Okay. We could do vegetables for breakfast. Sure. So, yeah, so that's my, that's my breakfast. And then my lunch is um, the same thing almost every day. If I'm not eating my lunch for breakfast, I have to like talk myself up. I have to like psych myself up to get excited about what I'm having instead. Oh, um, if you're, if you're going out for lunch or something. Right. Yeah. Like if at, at work, they, um, they like to do work meetings and provide lunch and, you know, and, and they feel, be- they feel sorry for me because isn't that I, something? I know isn't it? it's hilarious. So sometimes I'm compassionate towards them and I'll order a salad from you know, a local restaurant and I'll have that instead. Um, but the whole time I'm eating it, I'm like, well, oh, this is good, but it's not as good as my food. <laughs> so talk about what your lunch is because yeah, so, it's quite interesting and I love the name of it too. Yeah. So I call it my charcuterie. So it's a play on charcuterie. Um, and it's, I have uh, almost always, I have turkey, 
Uh, I like to buy the Costco turkey roast that's not sliced. And then I, I chop it up into like chunks that are like finger sticks, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And so I have turkey and a little, the cute little cornichon dill pickles. Um, And um, in case people don't know this, you can have two ounces of pickles or sauerkraut as a condiment. Right. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's important information in my world. Um, and then uh, I, I currently have 12 ounces of raw vegetables. Um, I might do some, I might do some cooked vegetables if there's some leftovers that, that work in mm-hmm. that kind of a bowl. Um, and then I have um, two ounces of hummus. Um, I'll, although yeah. I will say that the hummus that I'm using that I've used almost exclusively I've tried different hummus, but the one I like best is the Costco hummus, and it's actually two and a half ounces, but I count it as one measured. um, It's one measurement. It's one. So it's not like, and it works for me. Um, So that's my, that's my lunch. And then I almost always eat a banana um, because for the better part of what, 30 years, bananas were too high in sugar. That's not a good food to eat. Yeah, that was fun. in my first breakfast. I'll never forget it. Yeah. I'm looking at my breakfast of eggs, rice, and a banana. And I'm thinking, how do I get to eat this? Yeah. And I was so full because, yeah. you know, all this dieting, no yeah. way could I have had that. Yeah. Well, when I first started eating, I, I uh, brought Brentline eating, I, um, I was doing the six ounces of vegetables at lunch and the 14 at dinner. And I, I couldn't do it. I was like literally going to throw up on the third or fourth day. I was like, I can't eat all this food. And I went online on the, you know, the Facebook page online and said, what do I do? And someone said, you split them 10 and 10. And I, so I did, I split my vegetables 10 and 10. I now do uh, 12 at lunch and 10 at dinner. um, And that works for me. So, um, so that's my lunch. Um, I added a grain to lunch. Um, what do you normally have? Like Triscuits or something? Triscuits. Yeah. Usually um, that would go well with that. I have to make a comment here because you mentioned the banana. Yeah. A couple of comments. One saying I'm having a banana right now. And others, Deb is saying I didn't have a banana for 25 years. Yeah, but that's not, that's probably true. I mean, yeah. with all the dieting, that was just so taboo to yeah. have a banana for Christ. Yeah, so I, I don't like to choose favorites because to me, if I choose a favorite, that's eliminating all the other options. You know, they, they don't have the opportunity to be a favorite, but bananas are right up there. Grapes yeah. right up there. Yeah. So and you like the, I know you told me the other day you love the combination of grapes with pecans. Yeah. In my breakfast, mm-hmm. I almost always push the grapes and the pecan over to the like the last grape and pecan over to the edge of the bowl. So it's the last bite. <laughs> I I really love the idea of the charcuterie though. The yeah. charcuterie. Yeah. And I it's love just a, that idea. I have a little bento box. I actually have six of them and I fill them all. I try to fill them all once a week. Um, I don't always have time for that. I try to do it on the weekend. Um, and, um, that makes me happy when they're all done, but, and, and I've gotten really good at it. I it used to take me hours to do it. And now I can do, I can do six in a little over an hour. That's uh, to me, that's amazing. I, what skills I have. But <laughs> well, and to have that done now for, for dinner, does that come into play with like family members where are you eating well, something different? Um, we, okay. So I have an empty nest. My children are all okay. grown. Um, we do have boarders that rent from us. I call them roommates, um, but they don't eat with us. Um, so it's pretty much just my husband and I, um, and I, uh, my husband cooks um, almost as much as I do. Well, yeah, he cooks almost as much as I do. Um, and um, so uh, he'll frequently cook like meat on the grill. He'll smoke a whole bunch, 
of meat and we'll eat that all week. So I don't, I don't meal prep um, my meals for dinner, but we meal prep components. And, um, and I want to say that I'm really pleased to share with you that I recently heard Susan say that, um, that someone that had called in had earned the privilege of just writing down that they were going to eat a bright meal. And that was a food commitment because, and that's me. I don't, I don't have problems with willpower and depletion at night when it comes to my food. My food is so br eating bright is my identity. I will eat bright no matter what, because that's who I am. Just like a vegan doesn't choose to be a vegan only when it's convenient. That's how I feel about my bright lines. They are a part of my identity. And the other day when I asked you, if, did you ever have an aha moment? I loved your answer of, if you can't be bright, what do you do? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think it was in, I think it was in a boot camp module where um, Susan talks about um, you go to a, you go to an event or, you know, you go someplace and there are no bright options. Um, the best thing to do, the best thing to eat is nothing. And I was like, what? That's an option? I can eat nothing? <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. And I've, I've tried it out many times. Um, my family will get together for Mother's Day, Father's Day, whatever day. Um, my husband's family, they, they love to eat at like 10 o'clock in the morning or 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And it's like, that's not a meal time. What am I, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to eat at meal time. I'm not going to eat with them. I take, I take my trusty drink with me, fill it up with whatever I'm feeling like drinking that day, whether it be herbal tea or sparkling white water. And I just sit and enjoy their company. And I usually sit at the table where they're serving the food and then they all go scatter all over the place. And I just sit at the table with all the food and talk to them. It, and I, I know that's weird. I know. And someone did say, what is Terry's susceptibility score? Yeah, I'm, I am a 10. I'm a solid 10. But I have, I have a bright line eating identity. And um, to me, my bright lines are as sacred as my wedding vows. Mm. I'm not going to cheat on my husband because I made a vow. I'm not going to cheat on myself because I made a vow to me. Well, and to God, because, you know, he told me to do this. So why would and I it's, do that? And it's worked out pretty well. It's It really has. It really has. Because you went, you had the also, you had the actually great thing of being in the ditch for quite a while. And to yeah. have that feeling. Yeah. And to see something work, to me, I would think would even give you more strength. I, I really do think so. I really do. I believe that it really does. And it, to me, uh, if I could, if I could give somebody what I have, it would be find a way to make this your identity, yours, not something that you're part of. A, you're, it's not. You're not just part of a group. But I think that's really important. That's. The, the, uh, I wrote down three things tonight that I wanted to make sure that we talked about identity, connection, and process addiction. Let's talk and, about that. And before yeah, we and do, so, though, I want to ask one yeah. quick question. Somebody asked, what was in the tea? Okay. That you had in the slideshow with the tea and the breakfast. Right, right. So I generally have two cups of tea every day. Um, one of them is roasted dandelion root tea and that's supposed, that's supposed to, I don't remember what it does, but it's supposed to be good for your gallbladder. Um, and um, because it's a, it's like a bitter, I don't know. I, I like it. Um, and my other tea is for my gallbladder. So I have gallstones and I have refused to have surgery. I've, I haven't had a gallbladder attack. I don't think I've had one since I started Brightline Eating. Okay. I, I, I don't think I've had one since. Anyways, 
Um, I, I've had so many gallbladder attacks that I know when one's coming on, oh, I know no. what they feel like. And, um, the, and the standard, uh, remedy for a gallbladder attack is surgery. And I am really attached to my gallbladder. I don't want to get rid of it. So I did a bunch of research and I did a bunch of studying up. And so my gallbladder tea is kind of a, um, it's a, it, it's a, an adjustment to a recipe that I, that's supposed to help with gallbladder function. And I really think it does. So um, I've worked up to this. I don't try this straight up because it's, it's, I just, I'm just giving you the warning up front. So I've got two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. That's okay. a lot. That's a yeah. lot. Um, a, a, a ginger turmeric tea okay um and then the wild is it the wild sweet orange by good earth is that what it's called mm -hmm. yeah and then, I, so. and then i found this cranberry harvest tea on amazon so i have those three tea bags and that um steeps in uh i let it steep for an hour or two maybe three maybe all day sometimes i drink it the next day <laughs> But the gall, the apple cider vinegar is um, very, very helpful for gallstones. Wow. Yeah. And there's, there are some um, gallbladder cleanses that um, I've never been willing to do because I'm afraid of giving myself an emergency gallbladder surgery. Um, yeah. So I just do the things that will um, try to help my gall, my gallbladder. And I had, I, I had a, a um, an ultrasound not too long ago, and my doctor said, "You have gallstones." I'm like, "Yeah, we know that." Oh so my gosh! I still wow, have this those. Is really, something that you have to pay attention to. Yeah, yeah. So you know, right. it sounds like you're doing everything you can. Yep. Yeah, yeah. and I, I'm really pleased to to say that I I did not realize I haven't had a gallbladder attack since I started Brightline Eating. Wow, three years. That's yeah. great. Okay, so I want to get to those three things that you really wanted to make sure that we talked about. Yeah. And the first, the identity, you have you have talked about that a bit. Yeah. With each bright meal, you become more identified, right? Yes. Just yes. And um, James Clear, his book, Atomic Habits. Yes. I think that that is a primer for how to develop an identity of anything. Um. And, and, I, and I know that Susan has really promoted his practices a lot. A lot of what we do in Bright Line Eating are, that's kind of like right up our alley. So yeah, identity is, it's, to me, that's the key to really changing your life is developing an identity. Right. Like if, if you're saying, well, I can't start on, I can't start tomorrow because I always start my diets, you know, like over the weekend or whatever. Like on Monday, we're not just talking about a diet. We're talking about we want to just eat this way. Right. And we, what? We've got one second. I think that. Okay. So I one thing I wanted to talk about, too, you sent me a vlog the other day. And it was about substance and process addiction. Yes. That was fantastic. I had never heard Susan's blog on that. Do you want to talk about that just a little bit? Yes, that I was do. powerful. Okay, so she talks about the four bright lines. The first two, no, no sugar, no flour, they address substance addiction. So um, the body re does react addictively to white powdery substances that have that alter your state. <laughs> yeah. Whether it's sugar, flour, cocaine, heroin, whatever, you know. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so we address substance addiction by eliminating those. Um, and we can all tell you that a little is, you know, one is, one is too many and a thousand is not enough. And that is, that is so, so true. Um, so meals only and um, bounded quantities, that, that addresses process addiction. 
And it was really fun to hear her talk about it because this wasn't her own. She didn't come up with this on her own, but it rang true to her. So, yeah. Um, So process addiction, um, those are the, those are the addictions that we have that um, probably like are related to dopamine and, you know, and um, that's why certain behaviors are so addictive because of process. Well, and even like, I think the cultural piece, you know, we grow up in this culture of food. So our process is you go to grandma's at 10 o'clock and you're going to eat even if it's not noon and right. real time. Yes. I mean, the process of this is what we do. We go downtown and we have an ice cream cone. This right. is the process. Right. Isn't that what we're talking exactly. about? Exactly. Well, and, and thing is, is it's, it is, it's, it's, it's our survival. Right. You connect with your mother while you nurse as right. a baby. You learn from infancy that food gives you connection. And so, uh, so process addiction. um, So the example that I gave you was my gum habit. Oh yeah. Um, So for 15 years in another recovery program, I chewed gum and never gave it up, even though I knew that it was sweetened. So it broke the, the sweetener line. Um, and, uh, but I always, I always like justified it because I wasn't ingesting it, you know, Right. anyway, so, um, so I decided 14 day challenge. I will do it as written. That means no gum. I can do no gum for 14 days. And, um, I, and I don't think I cleaned out my kitchen the first 14 days because I live with other people, so I can't clean out my kitchen, which is really code for, I'm not sure I'm completely committed to this. So let's wait and find out. <laughs> Did you hear that boom? I No, but we saw the flash. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I estimated that when I finally got around to cleaning out my kitchen, I, I estimate that I got rid of, are you ready for this number? 5,000 pieces of gum. So if I didn't have an addiction to gum, um, then there nobody is, has. Yeah, there is no such thing as addiction. Um, and I will tell wow. you that every single day for four months, I had to decide if that was the day I was going to chew gum. I was. I got past the fourteen days, and I was like, "Okay, you know, I'm going to keep going. I'm not going to chew gum." And every single day for four for four months, I had to make that decision. And I told myself, "Okay, you know." I can chew gum in the future. Is today the day I want to start? No, I don't want to start today. And I did that. And then four months went by and I was like, I never even thought about chewing gum today. I must be making progress. (laughs) Isn't that something? And I will tell you that by four months, I had lost a significant amount of weight by then. So most of it, you lost a hundred pounds in the first year. Yeah, I had, I did. So, um, I will tell you that um, it's probably only been about the last six months and maybe not even that long that when I am stressed, I want to chew gum. Now when I'm stressed, my teeth start to bother me. So I think my brain has shifted to a different tactic, you know, because I I really do believe that I will feel better if I chew gum. I now still- the question is, was that sugar-free gum? Oh, yes. I had a subscription to xylitol sweetened gum. <laughs> I had a subscription. Now that is something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was like these cute little packets. And I'd get them I, every month. I'd get a pack. I'd get a box of gum. That's how you have 5,000 pieces of gum. You, you have to work at it to have a lot of gum. <laughs> that is really quite amazing. But I'm still finding gum. It's three years into this thing. And I'm still finding gum. Amazing. I have <laughs> wow. You would not want to go down that rabbit hole again. <laughs> no. I And that's pretty much where I am now. I'm like, is today the day I want to start chewing gum? No. And I did. I told someone not too long ago, I'm like, if I was interested in starting 
up this habit again, today would be the day. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I think it's really interesting that you still have this feeling in your mouth yeah. now. Yeah. You know, I call it throat hunger for me because I wanted to just shove something to squash whatever pain that was, anxiety, yeah. fear, right. you know, emotions, you know, sadness. That was what I call throat hunger. Like it's yeah. right here. I can feel it. I want to scream. Yeah. I want to cover that up. Uh, you know, yeah. you, you said something I, and while we're talking about like covering things up. The other day you said something and you said, you know what? I've never said this out loud. It's about isolation. How, you know, those moments with the gum, you could have had the gum. You had a thousand, thousands of pieces of gum. You're finding it. That had to be kind of temptation in front of you all the time. And you could have chewed that gum in isolation, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, but you said, and I had never heard this before, isolation is really, it's not a thing, a part of your personality. It's really a part of the addiction. Yeah. And it goes, yeah. I think, to that one it's in the 12-step programs. It's in the big book, I believe. That idea, the notion of this lurking idea that somehow, some way, maybe we can just have one and be normal. And we're immune from the addiction, you know, or the addictive tendency. Yeah. You know, are you hearing this storm? <laughs> this is really something. <laughs> Yeah. So isolation. Yeah. Not part of personality. It's part of the addiction. And that yeah. is the first time I heard it was the yeah. other day when you said that. I'll tell you that before COVID, I really thought that I could be a hermit. I could just live on the mountain and um, UPS could make deliveries. I wouldn't even have to see the driver and I could never leave. I could, I could, I really thought I could live that way. And I found COVID or I found Brightline eating in February and in March, I COVID started. So I did I did Brightline eating through COVID, and uh, to me that was a blessing because I didn't have in, I didn't deal with all that social pressure of food. Um, but it taught me. So I learned from COVID and Brightline eating that I I'm not a hermit. I couldn't be a hermit. I need people, um, and I now have. Um, I have, I'm now so well connected to people in bright line eating that even when I feel like I'm isolating, I am connecting to people. And I have a few people that I call them my comfort food. Um, they, they feel that need. I call them and say, I just need to, to talk. And they, they help me brew, have comfort. Oh, I think you've lost your sound. So, Oh, there you are. The third thing you wanted to talk about was connection, right? Yeah. And, and that is, that was what I was getting from you so much, what this connection means to you. Um, these aren't just people, and you might have never seen them in real life. It's, yeah, most, most, of these most of the people that I talk to every day, I haven't even met in, in person. And they're among some of my closest friends. But you mentioned that you're on a, in mastermind groups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have, I, I have, I actually have three mastermind groups. One is um, it's with my friend that did bright line eating with me for a couple of years. Um, we that's, but that's not a bright line eating mastermind group. It's from a life coach program that I participated in. Um, so, but we still meet and, um, and then I have a mastermind group where we study classes, um, the Bright Line Eating classes. We're currently doing the Maintenance 2 course. Um, oh, gosh. I, I highly recommend it. If you want to, uh, if you're not a, a paid member, if you don't have a paid membership, um, find someone that wants to do the class, pay for the membership to do the class, and then cancel the membership, you know? Um, if there's a class that you've you've heard someone talk about, go and take the class. It's amazing because I paid I paid like 
hundreds of dollars for classes when we first started. And now you can do them for $40 a month. That's just like, <laughs> anyways, okay. So, but the point is, is that um, this group, we study class, we study the classes and um, we meet for an hour once a week. And we talk about what we studied over the week. And then I have another mastermind group that is, follows the standard Brightline eating format for mastermind, except for we've shortened the time because we're in four different time zones. And we found one day a week that we can all meet for an hour. And we Very keep briefly, that what is that? What is that setup that you, that is suggested for the mastermind group? Um, you, you start out with a report, you report how you feel, a whim that you've had in the last week and um, how you did on your commitment from the previous week. And all, all four people do that. And usually you have four people in a mastermind group. So all four people do that. And then you start your mastermind. And um, if you're meeting for 90 minutes, then everybody gets, um, I think everybody gets 15 minutes to mastermind, which is really an ample time. I anyways, um, we get eight minutes in our group. Um, <laughs> and it's, it is plenty for us because we're, we're on task. Um, and then, so you bring something that you are struggling with or something that you'd like to do better or um, a concept you need more information on. Um, and because bright line eating isn't just about food, it's about inner work as well. Are, are, there's almost no topic that doesn't work in masterminding. Um, and then, so you mastermind, and then after everybody does their mastermind, then you do your takeaways and you your commitment for the week. And um, I put together a little spreadsheet and that that we use as our agenda that keeps us on task. And um, Zoom now has a timer feature where you can put it up on the screen so it counts down. It's really nice. And we meet on Zoom. You can do it on the telephone. You could do it on Facebook or, you know, you know like Facebook Messenger um, or FaceTime. Um, but I really think that having a buddy that you commit your food to every day that you truly do keep your commitment to, I think is I think that is brilliant and vital. Uh, I still commit my food every day. I write my I food think out. That that text. is huge. The accountability piece is absolutely a game changer. Right. When you and, have a buddy. And it sounds like your mastermind group, the one that follows the rules, the, mm -hmm. the template. The format. Sort of, the format. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that everybody in your group, it sounds like, is committed to that. And it just right. keeps everybody on task. Yeah. Yeah. And it's powerful. It's yeah. powerful. So having a buddy that you commit to and... Um, my, my, I actually am committing my food to two people right now and they're both in my mastermind group. <laughs> um, but you don't have to, it doesn't have to be that way. You can have a buddy that you commit to and a mastermind yeah. group that has nothing to, they, you know, it's, it's good. It's good. Um, so mastermind group, I think, um, it's, there's a part of me that's like, where has this concept been all my life? You know, I've wanted to have a mastermind group for decades. I didn't even know it. Um, and then um, I think that it's vital that you have a place to go where you can be in touch with other people. So like your group, I yes. think the group is amazing. Um, you know, there are different groups that are free that you can, you know, you don't have to spend a lot of money right. to to do all these things. And, and the suggestion was made here. Like if you're looking for a mastermind group to start up, just put your name out there on starting out right in the private group and say, I'm looking for mastermind people. I, I would bet you that you would get a group started so fast. You really do have to put yourself out there. I can't believe the time. I do want to ask you oh. two quick questions yeah. before we go. One, you know, you started really from a place of desperation just yes. before you got into BLE. And it didn't dawn on me until when you just said you went into COVID, like you went through the first year pretty alone, really yeah. 
learning this, it was actually probably kind of a blessing, right? It really was. No I, temptation to go out. I will, I will tell you that there was a lot of pain and suffering in COVID that a lot of people experienced. And I don't discount that at all. I had, I had family members that had horrible, uh, horrible experiences. experiences. Yeah. So I don't discount at all, but I will tell you that, um, that COVID was really a blessing in my life because it, it, it paused the world and it gave me a chance to catch up. And gosh, I, I think that I think that if we can do that for ourselves, yeah. we can give ourselves a blessing. Yes. And we don't have to wait for a pandemic. What would you say are the non-scale victories, Terry, that really come to mind when you think about this journey you've been on? Okay, so the number one that I'm going to put down is that um, my identity of Bright Line Eating has helped me to become my authentic self in my own life. I am more me in every area of my life than I've ever been. And I show up as me. I, you know, I, I, when I'm not perfect, but I show up and I, and, and other people know it because I share. Um, I'm just, I'm able to just be me. I'm very comfortable with who I am. Um, the, another one is um, this year's focus is make it like lunch. I'm trying to make the rest of my life like lunch. Contained, variety, excitement, wow. but, but simple. And it's okay if it's the same every day because what a life to have, don't you know? Um, and then the third thing that I wrote down for my non-scale victories is um, clothing has become my hobby. Wow. I love clothes. I love color. I wear clothes to work that other people would co consider a costume and I, and I can pull it off. <laughs> you, so, now have got, you now have options, right? I do. And my, cl my, cl my uh, closet has its own app and its own calendar. So I can what? tell you. What, yeah. I can tell you what I've worn for the last 871 days because <laughs> it counts. It counts on its own. What is the name of the app? Um, Stylebook. Stylebook. Okay. Yeah. There's a couple of them out there. Stylebook is exclusive to I, uh, to iPhone products. Um, Open Wardrobe is another really good one. That's great. Yeah. I've never heard of that. Yeah. So I take pictures of what I'm wearing and send them to my mom. She lives in Idaho and I live in California. So it's good to have a mom because yeah, uh, she I can send her my my uh, my vanity and. <laughs> She well, enjoys it. <laughs> I think that's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> so yeah, those are my non stale victories. <laughs> oh, that's great, Terry. And my last question for you, you've been through a lot. You know, you've been able to manage this right. This is just absolutely incredible. And someone might be coming in or, or listening and thinking, I don't think I could do that. I don't think I could do what Terry's doing. What would you say to someone who is just doubtful about this kind of program? Um, it, you can't do this alone. You might be able to do it for a while, but you're, it, it, your life will throw something at you that will be too big to manage. You got to get connection. Mm -hmm. if, if, you know, this, the food program, no sugar, no flour, down the quantities, meals, that's nothing special. It really is not. There's there's lots of programs out there that do this. Um, but you you need people that you can rely on. You need to develop, and you don't need a lot. Find one person that cares enough about what, th what you're doing that they'll be your friend and branch out from there. Susan says you need six people. So work up. You know, get one, one, if, if you get one and they get, and then you, you get another one and they get another one. Now you got four, you know, you can but have a mastermind group. Then. You, exactly. I, and it's, and I know that that's probably one of the hardest parts about this because um, addiction wants to keep you isolated. Addiction wants you to fail and not be able to manage your life. 
And, and addiction wants you to isolate. Yeah. And that is how that's that how that's how it gets you. So, Such great yeah. advice. That's that's really true. You know, you talk about this connection piece. It is the amazing part of all of us together. What was what did you say your keystone? My keystone habit is that I meal prep one item oh. every day. Okay. Well, you know what? We're going to close out because it's time, but we're going to come back to that. Okay. So I'm going to say good night. Well, you know what? Let's just go three question Thursday right now for everybody. Just stay over here. Terry, how would you like to play three question Thursday? I'm going to tell you that I, when you asked me that, I was like, what's that? Because <laughs> I don't know that I've ever stuck around for three question Thursday. So I went and did some research. I did my homework. Okay. Let's do it. Let's yeah. do it. Three <laughs> question Thursday, because we cannot pass on that. That's right. Meal prep. How yes. do you handle meal prep? Okay. So I, I talked just a little bit about it, but the really the key here is um, I meal prep at least one item every day. It might be, I went to the grocery store. I count that as meal prepping. Mm. So if I go to the grocery store, I don't have to do anything more because lugging all those groceries home, that's enough. Um, you know how many vegetables we, we eat. That's, a, that's pretty heavy. <laughs> yeah. So um, I meal prep at least one item a day. Um, and so like I will do all my yogurt. I'll do eight yogurt uh, cottage cheese combinations at one time because that's how many come out of the carton. So if I open up the carton and milk prep the whole thing, I'll do that one day. And then maybe the next day I'll do all the fruit for five days. Um, and then the next day um, maybe I'll do the cereal you know, all the dry stuff for breakfast. So, so it's kind of like a perpetual motion machine, you know, and. Um, you know what it and, sounds like to me? It sounds like an atomic habit. It sounds like, and I did this after I talked with you the next day, I'm like, I'm going to do that. And I just peeled a few carrots. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, that's my thing for today. <laughs> I peeled yeah. some carrots and guess what? I could use them for lunch. <laughs> Yeah. You know, and, and so, um, and, and it's funny because back when I was in the ditch every day, I would write down four things that I was going to do. These are my active Terry habits. Cause I was trying to no longer be sedentary. I wanted to be active Terry. And so I would, it was, um, no artificial sweeteners. Cause I wasn't willing to do no sweetener at all. <laughs> Still in that make a deal mode. Yeah. <laughs> Gluten-free, because I knew that flour was not good for me, but I didn't understand that it was all flour. <laughs> right. And um, meal prep and exercise. Those were my four things that I tried to do every day on my own, and I couldn't, I couldn't do them. And now it's like, those are just, that's just part of who I am. So, yeah. But yeah, meal prep. It's been something I've been trying to do, and now I just do it. And, uh, okay, so that's my keystone habit, meal prep. Okay. Something every day. Here's question number two. We're still on three question Thursday. Whatever happened to exercise? You said that you were in this really, this challenge, you lost yeah, weight. My boots, did you yeah. bring it exercise back after a hundred pounds or did you wait or what did you, you know, do? Thank you for asking this question because um, when Susan said no exercise, I was like thrilled. I took her at her word and I stopped exercising. I did not exercise. Uh, I missed the part of the memo that said for three to four months. Um, so February, I stopped exercising. By September, I was I was like crawling out of my skin. I needed to, I needed to exercise. So I started exercising in September and. Um, I, this, this winter, I, um, uh, somehow I stopped exercising again. Um, well, I had surgery, I had cataract surgery, so that was part of it. I got out of the habit, you know, and, and then I got, I got kind of wimpy and I wasn't willing to go walk in the, in the desert. Um, but I picked it back up and I bought a treadmill because 
I need to, I need exercise. Uh, it's like, it's like taking an antidepressant. Um, <laughs> if you need it, you need it. I need it. Um, so yeah, I, and I will tell you that uh, once I, uh, once I hit that point where um, I, where I felt that urge to exercise, um, I just found things that I like to do and I did them. And isn't so, that such a joy instead of feeling like you had to do so many minutes because this was going to get you some weight loss? Right, right. That's well, and I and this this winter I tried going to another boot camp class. I went to one and I was like, nope, this is not I do not want to do this. I, it was a matter of fact, I was like, yeah, all I do is stand around for like half the time they're there and then they lift some weights and then they stand around. It's like, come on people, let's get going. Come on, let's do it. So it's I'll a, just work out. It's with videos at home. Okay. Here's yeah. the third question for all the money, all the marbles. All yes. right. You know, you talked about some great resources that are available through the all access. And I see somebody had said, yep, I'm signing up for that maintenance class. Great. But when we talked the other day, you mentioned there are also a lot of free resources. Oh, what are the things yeah. that you would suggest? I I would say that had I known how many free resources were available, I would not have spent as much money as I spent. Because <laughs> it was really expensive to do Bright Line Eating back in Before 2000. All access. Yeah, it was. It, it, to be a paid member and hang out with all the cool kids. Um, <laughs> now I know there are cool, now I know there are cool kids all throughout the community and you can be as cool as you want to be. You do not have to spend a lot of money. So um, some of the resources, uh, faith-based groups, I think are invaluable. Um, there's, I belong to a couple of faith-based uh, bright light eating groups. I think they're amazing. Um, and um, and I don't remember all their names, so I'm not going to say any of them. <laughs> yeah, I, I okay. actually have a uh, spreadsheet in the Starting Out Right group. I'll have to bring that out because I probably had 30 groups on there. Oh, You know, perfect. if people yes, want to find please, another group. Yes, please do that. So, yeah. Um, and um, so faith-based groups, your group, um I, what a what a service you provide! Thank you. Oh, and Dub's here, and a lot yeah, of people. Yeah. Who, you know, it's the people that make it. It's the right, participation, right. yeah, which is amazing. So, and um, I belong to um, a, a paid challenge where we pay fifty dollars every eight to ten weeks, and if you stay bright the entire time, you get your money back, and if you don't stay bright, um, you um forfeit your money you can stick around for the support we love you still matter of fact we we love we don't love you any less um so we so anyways and then at the end everybody who kept their lines bright get to split the, the pot and so that was that you know somebody used that just the other day my roommate said oh you gotta try this it's just a bite it's not gonna kill you and i'm like well, you know, it won't kill me. You're right. But it'll cost me $50 because I'm in a, cha in a challenge with a bunch of people. And if I eat off my plan, I have to pay back. I, I lose my 50 bucks. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's a another, motivator then. yeah, it's another little tool and it only costs 50 bucks. And you, you put your 50 bucks in once you stay bright, you get your 50 bucks back. I've actually made more than 50 bucks back at this point. So, um, so I, the money doesn't really hold me. It doesn't hold anything for me anymore because I'm like, well, I already made my 50 bucks, but I keep my lines bright. So it doesn't really matter either. <laughs> but you know, what? it was, a, it was a very, it was very motivating when I, when I first started. Um, and there was another one that came that I, I'm trying to think of. Oh yeah. How could I forget this? I am on the committee with the um, brightest, uh, you brightest in Utah, Utah's brightest. Yes. There's a great they, conference coming up. They have a conference coming up in, um, in June and I'm in charge of registration. So get registered and come and see us. Yeah, it's, been, open to, 
It, it's open to everybody. And it's just, it's just outside of Salt Lake City. So yes. it's easy to get to. And then you can meet people in person. Um, I uh, went to the first one they had three years ago. And, um, and I met a bunch of really great people um, that, that are my friends. So, Again, connections. Yeah. You know, these oh, are those people, are, they've, they've been down the rocky road and such great friends everywhere you can find. Well, Terry, this. So I wanted to just share with you yes. real quick that we're going to get done and I've already eaten my dinner. We're going to get done and I am going to um, drive home and I'm going to want to eat because that is what happens after I do something like this, teach a class, give a presentation, do an interview. It's not hunger. I'm not hungry, but I am going to want to eat. And so instead I'm going to call a friend and we're going to chat. I'm going to go home and hang out with my husband and um, share with him how this went. Um, so I've got a plan for how I'm going to deal with the pecs that happens, the post event clap syndrome that happens after an emotional event like this. Yes, it's really, I mean, like after each meeting like this, mm -hmm. I too have to just ground myself. Yeah. But I do yeah. have a lot of connections after each Zoom chat. So that is my outlet. And yeah. yeah. I, might go, I might go play in my closet app. They're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, and make sure you post all these good ideas in the Starting Out Bright group. Anytime, anywhere, any place. Thank no, you. We need more charcuteries. <laughs> Keep that going. <laughs> Terry, you have been such an amazing guest. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Gave us a lot to think about and inspiration, just some really practical and insightful ideas. And it, I really appreciate that knowing you can stay bright. You can map this out and you can stay bright. It takes being food is first, doing the inner work and making connections. Just so great to know you. And thank you for being on Starting Out Bright. And thank you for playing Three Question Thursday. It's thank you. So good night, everybody. Good night. Stay bright. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Good night. <laughs>